Hey there, Soul Shines! It's Michelle here, and it is Tutorial Tuesday! Did I do any good with editing? I'm not sure, we'll find out. Before we get on with the video, I want to invite you guys to hook that subscribe button, leave us a like, and put some yarn in the description or comment. I was gonna be so cool. I totally messed up. Put some yarn in the comments. <laughs> okay, um, today's for tutorial Tuesday, we're gonna actually talk about increasing. And this is a multiple, um, multiple, multiple reasons why we're gonna talk about like what are increases for, what it's, what it increases, what it's used for and how to do some spacing of it and that kind of thing. We're gonna talk about staggered increases versus other increases and kind of a bit of everything. And here's the thing, it is for knitting and crocheting. It works for both, um, I do both. And so um, let's get going on it. There will be chapters and so you can jump if you wanna jump if you're like, I don't need to know that. Or you could just watch anyway. All right, so what is an increase? Basically, it's anything you need to do to get another stitch on your row or multiple stitches, depending on what you're doing. So in crochet, most of the time, not always, most of the time crocheting looks like doing two stitches in the same space. So you're maybe single crocheting along, cro crochet, crochet, it's one finger, you know. Um, and you get to a place where you're like, I need an increase here. So you're doing your single crochet. So you do one single crochet. And then in that same spot, you do another single crochet. And it works the same for double crochets, half double crochets, triple crochet, treble crochets, um, whatever. It's doing two stitches in the same place. That's what most of the time it is. There are also times that you're going to use a chain. Um, we see this a lot in granny squares, like every corner. Um, one of the ways that you increase is adding chains at your corners, which actually gives you more stitches on the row. And then you work in, you know, work around those chains and you add up. So but you can do that in the middle of a row too. You can add some chains in if you want to have maybe a little hole in that place. You don't mind. Or if you're doing, um, you know, maybe you're working along in something that has chains and you just add extra chains to increase. That's just adding an extra stitch. Um, if you have any other kind of increases, they're gonna be probably a fancy step in your pattern and your pattern will have instructions. Okay, so that's for crocheting. For knitting, um, you do yarn overs. Yarn overs will cr usually create a hole like an eyelet hole, lace work holes in your project and or you can knit into the back of them and it closes them up. So it's one way to add it. Another way you do front and back and then the other way of knitting increases, these are the ones I know of, is you pick up a loop somewhere, either from the bar or from the leg and then there's different directions so that you can have the stitch leaning one way or another way. If you're really interested in that kind of stuff, I suggest you finding some tutorials on those, how to do them, how to see them leaning, different kinds of knitting increases. But either way, the whole point of it is to add an extra stitch or two, because I have done, excuse me, forgot to silence my phone. I have done knitting increases that are a little bit of a challenge, but where you have to knit into the front and back, like you knit into it, then you have to knit into it again, then you have to knit into it again, it's really random. Um, so I have done work where, where you can add more than one increase together. And of course I've done that in crocheting. You can add multiple stitches in one stitch. You can increase two, three, four, five, like it, it can happen and there's reasons for it. So let's talk about what increases are used for. You, increases can be used if you want to grow something evenly. So say you're making a sweater and you need to add some extra space or you're working on the collar, um, the yoke part, and you need to add it because you know, your yoke doesn't stay this far around. It's 
got to increase so it gets out bigger. And then you'll put your increases around evenly so that it grows together out. Um, you could be making a flat piece that you're wanting to have grow out like this. Um, a lot of times increases is used in circles. I mean, you have to have increases to make a circle. And um, one of the ways in crochet and in knitting that really increases show up is in amigurumis. And here's where it gets fun because your increases don't have to be evenly spaced. If you want to create a little bulge, then you can put a whole bunch of increases all together and keep the rest flat and it kind of makes it do a bulge out. So you can do your same amount around and then you like, okay, well, I want it to kind of have a little nose that looks like it's attached. I don't want to make a separate piece. And so you'll come to, and you'll like over three stitches, you could add like six, nine stitches and it will make a little ruffle kind of thing. And then you keep going and, it, and so you'll have this little spot that has extra stitches and it creates a shape. So you can use increasing for shaping. Yeah, you can add dimension, you can add extra space, you can do increase. Another way of doing increases, I forgot to mention, is when in knitting you cast on more in um, at the end of a row. Well, technically you could cast on more in the middle of a row and it would have a loop, um, which is another way of adding stitches. Or in crochet, you can chain a few more or do a foundation, single, double, triple, half double, some form of foundation stitch across. Um, a lot of times if you're making two flat pieces for a sweater, you'll have your body piece, but then you'll need to increase, you know, like my t-shirt here, it comes out like this. And so you come up here and then you can cast on that extra length and keep working it up um, or chain it and do that. So that's another way of increasing a product to mention earlier. Sorry. So math. Sometimes, and this is number one reason why I wanted to come on and do this, but I also kind of wanted to show a little bit about how you can use it to create dimension. A lot of times you'll get your pattern and your pattern says increase six stitches evenly doesn't tell you where to put your increases. Usually your patterns will tell you, hey, crochet this many, do an increase. Crochet this many, do an increase. Crochet this many, do an increase. Same with knitting, just replace crochet with knitting. Knit this many, purl this many, increase this way. Sometimes they tell you what increase to use, sometimes they don't. Um, but sometimes, both in knitting and in crochet, it says um, increase four evenly. How do you do that? Well, that's where maths come in. Um, so if you need to do some math to figure out your increases, you can use a calculator, one of the online calculators. I don't like them. And the reason I don't like them is because I still end up having to do math. Because almost always they tell you to do a few stitches and then do your increase. And I would usually do my increases at the beginning or the start of a place, not in the middle, so it always confuses me. And you don't have an option to say, hey, I want my increases at the end of my stitch count, or I want my increases at the beginning of my stitch count, or I want them halfway through. It doesn't give you that option, it just says to do it. So I like using math. So let's say we have 96 stitches, and they want us to increase to 100. Sounds like a sweater pattern to me. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take 96 and divide it by four. And I'm gonna do that really quick so I have actual numbers for you guys. 96 divided by four, and it equals 24. Which means that you are going to have 24 stitches between each increase. Kind of. 23 stitches, but we'll talk about that in a second. So what I do, if I'm just doing this one increase row and it's not going to be something else to where I figure I need to stagger my increases, which we'll talk about in a minute, then I'm just going to knit or crochet 24 stitches. When I get to the 24th stitch, 
I know that's where I put an increase. So if I'm crocheting, that means I'm gonna put another stitch in there, in that stitch. If I'm knitting, I need to think about the 24th stitch as, okay, am I doing this one and knit front and back? Am I needing to pick up a stitch before this or after this? Am I putting my yarn over before or after? So there's a little bit of finagling, but even if you put your yarn over before, as long as then you count your next 24 and put it in the same place, it still evenly ends up around. So um, it's pretty easy to just do that. Now, in my circle video, I talk about what happens when you just keep doing the increase in the same place. So we have a circle and we've done a few rounds and now we need to increase three stitches or increase after three stitches. So we crochet three stitches, we put our increase in the fourth stitch. Crochet three stitches, put our increase in the fourth. Crochet three, put our increase of fourth until we get around. Then the next row comes along and we're like, oh, I'm gonna do it again. Only this time I need four stitches before my increase. So we're gonna do that again. What starts happening is you get little points. You get corners. On your knitting, you get really obvious lines. No matter what way you do increases on knitting, there's going to be lines. And if you stagger them, they look a little different than if you don't. And that's an aesthetic preference depending on what you're making. But you're gonna get these things, these points where you've increased all together. Sometimes that's for your benefit, sometimes you don't want that. So we do what's called staggered increases. And when it comes to increases, I go by whether or not I need even stitches or odd stitches. Sorry, I had a little brain moment, like how am I gonna explain this? If I do one stitch and then an increase, I would do my one stitch and then I do my increase. So I end up with three stitches total for the set. And then usually in a circle you end up with 18 single crochets around. And then if I want to offset it, my next time I need two regular stitches between each increase. So I'm going to put one of my stitches, do my increase, and then I'm gonna do my two, increase, two, increase, two, increase around. And then I get to the end and I do my increase and I still have one more left because I have to finish the first set. Because I split up that first set of increases to the beginning and the end. And I do that when the number of stitches between the increases is even. When the number of stitches between the increases is odd, if it's an odd number, then I'm going to start my round with my set. Now, sometimes we start a round where we do our increase, then we put the number that we need, say we need to do five. We do our increase, five stitches. Increase, five stitches. Sometimes we do our five stitches and then end with an increase. Either way, your total number there is seven because your increase is two stitches. So on our example, where we went from 96 to 100, um, it looks like, because you have to do 24 stitches and an increase, it looks like you're actually going to be doing even. However, when you add that increase in, that means your whole set is 25. Because it's that last stitch, that 24, that stitch 24, that is your increase stitch. So you have 23 stitches before your increase or after your increase. So it's actually an odd number. I hope that doesn't confuse you too much. What are you trying to go up to? We're going up to 100. 100 divided by four is 25. That's an odd number. If you are doing a circle and you're increasing by six each time and you are at a place where you need to have 48 stitches at the end of your round, that means that when you divide that 48 by six, you've got eight. And um, when you take away your increase, that means you've got six. So you are doing dividing that one in half. I hope I wasn't too confusing. It's not as hard as it sounds. 
it's really a matter of dividing your stitches by the number that you need to increase. If you want to stagger, then it's remembering the number of stitches between your increases. Are they inc even or odd? And you only need to worry about staggering if you are putting them on top of each other and you either don't want the line that shows up or you don't want them to become angle. If you really need your circle to be a circle shape at the end, then staggering is important. If you, most of the time, you actually don't really need to stagger your increases. It's an aesthetic preference, but most of the time you start doing something else and at the end you can't even tell that you didn't stagger your increases. So don't really worry about it too much. Like I said, I hope that wasn't too confusing because I don't want to confuse people more. I know what I'm talking about, but sometimes other people don't. And truthfully, it's something that I would rather invite you to my Discord um, server where you can get on a video call with me. It's kind of like a Zoom call. And that link will be in the link tree that's down below. If you go to the link tree link, click on the link tree link, it will open up a thing that has a list of all my links. Find the Discord link, go join the server. And then you can say, hey Michelle, can we get on a chat? and talk about how to do this. I don't understand what you're saying and can you show me? Because one-on-one -on -one is so much easier than sometimes. So much easier sometimes. So if you need that, please reach out. We can't do that and you can't join the server or getting on a video with me doesn't work for you. Ask questions, I'll try to clarify what doesn't make sense, okay? Anyway, Remember to let your light shine through your creations, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!